Today I'll be installing Windows 95 on this laptop without using a floppy drive, but I will use this LaCroix for added aesthetic. We have a Zeno 32 gig PATA SSD here that we will install Windows 95 on. As you can see there's some kind of funky pinout on the back of this drive. Um, that is for setting for master or slave. Hmm. We don't really do that anymore, but there we are. Look at those pins. Thick. So now we'll pull out our tray and open the drive cage. And there we are. Now we can see our old 5120 megabyte IBM Travel Star Drive. It's hella thick. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're gonna put that away. Sorry, thick. Okay, so now we will put the SSD in instead. Oh yeah. Just look at that aesthetic. So now, instead of uh, putting in a Windows 95 disk, we're going to put in our Windows 98 CD. You might be wondering, why? If you're installing Windows 95, well, I'll go over that. So, we'll boot from CD-ROM. And we'll choose uh, Start Computer with CD-ROM Support. Now that we've booted into this DOS prompt thingy, we will pop in the Windows 95 disk. There we go. Now I typed the F disk command and went to this screen and hit yes. We are basically formatting the drive so that it has a primary partition of 6 gigs, an extended partition of 256 megabytes, and a logical partition of the remaining space. You might ask, why are you not doing all 32 gigs? Well, that'll be fixed later. So as you can see, we've created the partitions bit by bit. And now it's going to have us restart. We're going to swap that out, put Windows 95 disk back in there, and now we're unpacking the Windows 95 CD files onto the PATA SSD from E-Windows95. We have to use the MD command to create the directories. 
MD Windows makes the Windows directory. CD Windows lets us select the directory we just made. And then MD Options makes the Options directory and etc. Once you have Windows Options and Cabs folders, you can just type copy e slash windows95 slash asterisk dot asterisk. And now we can just type setup and there we are, windows95 setup. And make sure you choose C Windows instead of C Windows.000. We'll just rename that. Then we'll just need a key. Uh, I already bypassed that. Got that done. If you see it prompt for floppy or a drive like it just did now, hit cancel. And now we have Windows 95 installed, and it's going to install Aesthetic Internet Browser Internet Exploder 4. Aesthetic. It really does take a very long time to install, doesn't it? Okay, and we've bypassed that, so now Internet Exploder is installed. And you might notice there is no sound. Well, we have to find the drivers now. Also, if you're wondering how I keep making the, uh, the screen fill, I'm doing Control Function T which stretches. Okay, there's still no sound. Okay. Let's see what drivers are missing. Hmm.
So now we're going to go into the Windows 95 disk and we're going to install the USB supplement. I've added a USB 2.0 StarTech PCMCIA hub card so that we can add flash drives to transfer data quickly. However, that's going to require some additional files. So I'm going to use my uh, P IDE USB adapter to use Windows 7 to transfer and also partition the drive properly. So, uh, let's see. So we're just going to partition this drive. We're going to change the size of the of the uh, logical partition. Now I'm using EaseUS Partition Master to make the D partition on the SSD fill the rest of the drive. I did this because of the BIOS limitation slash F disk limit of 8 gigs. Now that we bypassed that, I've filled the whole drive. You could probably use an even bigger drive than I'm using, but I just wanted to be safe. So now we'll need to install daemon tools. But before we do that, we're going to have to format this drive so that it shows the correct amount of space. Okay. Done. Now we have a D partition. Okay, so now we're going to use a flash drive to uh, transfer a few things that we don't have. So we're going to be installing uh, Internet Explorer 5 now because Daemon Tools requires it. Internet Explorer 6 also works, um, either one is fine. Now we're going to install daemon tools. Now that all this work is done, you can mount giant ISO images and load things onto the laptop via USB. You can also watch nice golf videos. Aesthetic. And with the spacious 32 gig PATA SSD, I can load the top 10 Windows 95 to 98 era CD games via ISO image now. Instead of loading physical disks, load times are now lightning fast and things like Mist run like Usain Bolt, instead of having to load every scene for a few seconds. You can see the aesthetic 
of being able to run Phantasmagoria without any CDs. And other obscure FMV titles are all playable. So thanks to the Windows 98 CD and a partition program, we've managed to turn this old 1997 Compact Armada 7730MT into a practical retro gaming laptop with a 25 second boot time thanks to the PATA SSD. Oh, there we are with One Must Fall 2097 Absolute Classic. Listen to that, that music. Some lit, lit jams, fam. Lit jams. And yes, this laptop actually will run Half-Life, though not very well. If you like this video and you want me to push the limits of what this machine is capable of, please like, comment, subscribe, and donate via PayPal or Google. If I receive enough funding, it will be put to good use. There is a docking station I can get for this laptop to heavily boost its gaming performance, and uh, I'll definitely grab one if you guys are interested. The docking station for this can take dual graphics cards even, though only PCI bus or ISA bus. If I receive enough donations or revenue from this video, I'll definitely grab one. Recommend me a graphics card you want me to pair with it in the comments below. rugged, compact, portable, and laptop PCs than any other. So you can carry the high performance of compact wherever you want to go. Or wherever you have to go. Compact. It simply works better.